Today's video review will be somewhat incomplete because I'm going to be uploading some of the segments as separate videos. For example, my power consumption video, my heat video, as well as my uh, heat. Yeah, heat is the same as temperature, so I was going to say fan noise video. Those ones are already up. I also have already been working on a lot of other stuff to do with this card, so you're going to see as many as like 8 to 10 videos about the Radeon 6870 on my two channels. But this is meant to be a general overview of the performance. I will have boring graphs, but I'm going to spoil the surprise a little bit. The 6870 is not the highest end single GPU card. Now, the reason for that is not known to me, but for the last few generations, the 3870, the 4870, and the 5870 have been the fastest single GPU cards from their generations. Now we've had dual GPU cards, which are faster, so we've had a 3870X2, 4870 x 2 and 5970, but AMD is changing it with this generation. They're changing the numbering scheme and they're also changing the branding. So instead of an ATI Radeon graphics, we're going to have AMD Radeon graphics and the numbering's going to be different. So the 6870 is actually the price point replacement for a 5770. So that means that the 6870 is actually a little bit slower than the 5870. But that's still impressive because the 6870 costs a fraction of what the 5870 does. It performs almost as well in many applications and when the tessellation really ramps up, for example in the Heaven benchmark, you're going to find out, actually you might not see this, but you'll see that the performance of the 6870 is equal to the 5870 and though I don't think I have the numbers in my graphs, the minimum frame rate of the 6870 is actually much better than the 5870. So that's what's cool about it. So with the new price point, the 6870 is an excellent replacement for the 5770 as long as you understand where it slots into the new AMD lineup. So that means we're going to have 6900 series cards that are single GPU and are faster than the 6800 series. So for the cards, I tested the 6870, 5870, 5770 because those are the cards that in terms of performance it's very close to and that it's supposed to replace. And then just for some context on the NVIDIA side, I tested the GTX 460 as well as the GTX 480 because the GTX 460 is a bit of a lower end refresh of a previous high end card. So it's um, in some ways, it's going to be the latest card from NVIDIA, even though it's not the fastest. So it should be the most comparable in terms of the architectural changes that they've been able to implement to get the best performance possible out of it. So I used high graphical settings for all of these tests. That means I'm using anti-aliasing, anisotropic filtering, and I'm turning all of the details way up in all of these games. So stay tuned for boring charts and graphs, and then the conclusion. So for the street price, this is one rockin' card, because we're looking at about $249 upon release, uh, depending which brand you go with. The one featured in my review today is the MSI Radeon 6870, and honestly, yeah, I just gotta say, this thing is, if you have $250, you want a DirectX 11 graphics card that's got all the latest features, remember, they've updated a lot of things from the 5870 feature-wise, it's not just a performance boost. This is an HDMI 1.4a port. That means you've got support for Blu-ray 3D, and we're also expecting a driver update for 3D gaming on this particular card, okay? You've got all the usual stuff, which is audio over HDMI, iFinity support, two-way crossfire support, all of that cool stuff, except you get this big tessellation performance increase, you get 3D, that is both in Blu-ray and in gaming, and because of the way the inputs, or rather outputs, are spaced out, you get four displays for iFinity. So you can actually hook up two displays to either DVI or HDMI, so that's sort of one group of two displays, and then you can do two displays via the mini DisplayPort connectors. So that's your clue, the fact that there's actually five connectors on the back of this video card that you can actually hook up more displays than you could on the last generation 5870. So you can see they've 
changed the layout somewhat. They've replaced that single full-size DisplayPort port with too many DisplayPort ports. If you want to see the card more up close, check out my unboxing, uh, where I really show it from all the different angles and I talk a lot more about the features, but I hope you've enjoyed this video review of the performance of the Radeon 6870.